All right, guys. So, um, so glad you could join us. Um, I actually just got the picture that you see. I've got a point over here, right? Um, uh, that you see from a good friend of mine. And this is just what this dad does with his very sharp, very beautiful daughter. So they are in a boat. I don't know if you can see the two sails right there. Let me make that a little bigger. I'm going to get a little too close to the screen for most of you sometimes, but I want you to see some good stuff today. That's why we ask you to go on speaker view. Uh, so hopefully we can give you all the good stuff. So that to me is not just a gorgeous picture with a couple of gorgeous people, um, but that's what we're going to talk about today. Not quite this elegant, not quite this fancy, um, <clears throat> but we're going to talk about activities to do um, with your with your dads and kids, with your moms and kids, and you guys are going to be sending this out. You're going to be doing a lot of things um, virtually for the next few weeks, but also there's a lot of value in this as you go. You know, almost everything we're looking at right now is how do we manage in this new normal? But right now, what we want to look at is, okay, this is what we can do now, but it's also available for later. And these are tools that we've been thinking about and working on at Strong Fathers. Um, one of the reasons that we haven't done all the things we'd hope to do is time and money. Uh, we self-fund everything that we do. Uh, but the other piece is we're usually running around the country. I'm running around the country doing these things. Uh, and so now I'm not. Not going anywhere, right here in Springtown, Texas, here on the family farm. Um, so uh, we've had some time, and this is really good timing. And I appreciate the invite. And so what we want to talk about, let me do this for a minute. This is what we do. So we work with dads and kids in uh, Head Starts and public schools. Um, we have moms come. We have grandparents come. So everything we're doing today is family engagement, but everything we built here is absolutely great for dads. So there'll be some things that you do that moms love and dads don't. Um, and there'll be some things we're going to do today moms aren't that fond of, uh, but everything should work for any kind of family situation. So we've, we've, we're finishing up our 17th school year, and uh, we've been in 45 states. If you're in one of the states without a dot, I think Oregon would be in this region is about the only one we haven't been out to. Um, as far as actually doing a program, I've been to Oregon, but we haven't worked out there. Um, you know, we'll give you the ain't been there discount. So we'd love to work with you. And um, this is how we do it. So everything we're talking about today is going to be grassroots. This is what you're going to do with your families and your programs where you're at. Some of you are urban, some of you are suburban, some of you are rural, but everything we do is nose to nose with dads. Well, now it's not, but this is what dads do nose to nose with their kids. So it's going to be basic. It's going to be simple. It's also going to be strength based. Right. None of this is to help a dad fix himself. This is using the strength that he has as a dad with his playful nature, with his uh, spirit of competition, with his mechanical ability, whether he has it or not, he hopes to and likes to. Um, but it's all based on uh, the strengths that dads bring to the child uh, relationship. And then everything we're doing is not for the dads, it's for the kids. So we want to engage moms and dads, grandparents, uh, step parents, anybody, we want to engage them in the life of the child for the sake of the child. So everything that we're doing is going to be for the sake of the kid. So um, that's how we do it. That's what we try to do. And so I'm going to move pretty quickly through some activities. Um, and at the end of the webinar, we're going to give you a, um, a URL and you're going to sign up. You're just going to give us your name and your email. We're going to send you all the handouts that you see in today's program. So everything that we do, we have a handout in English and Spanish. We'll send that to you. So you're able to use those with your families. All this stuff is very affordable for your program and your families. We'll talk about that in a second. And so we just wanted you to know that at the end of this, you'll get all these resources. You don't have to take pictures of your screen. We're going to send this out. And again, everything will be available in English and Spanish. And so, what we're going to do today on these activities is what we call um, jump drawer science, right? It, there's a lot of cool stuff we could do with our families, but it doesn't matter if they don't have the materials at home. If they can't redo it at home, if they can't replicate it at home, then you're kind of wasting time. Like it's really fun to count a bucket of counting bears, but not every family has a bucket of counting bears. So we can talk about all the fun activities we do in a Head Start classroom, but we can't always replicate that. There's some really cool stuff we could do in science, um, but 
the parents would either have to order the materials or the materials are dangerous or could be or and so everything we're going to do is basically what with what they already have at their disposal or what they can get to right and so that's why we call it junk drawer science the other thing about these activities is they are very basic very simple they're fun for parents and kids right but they're e two things they're easy to lead so it's not hard for a mom or dad with whatever minimal skills to do this and it's easy to succeed right and so what we want to do is we want to make everything simple for them to do so we want to make sure that anything they do is is not going to fail right it's not going to be hard to make it easy to do and so we're going to start with our math activities we call it we call it dads and kids uh, dad, dad and kid math night let me pull up our other camera here so um actually yeah i'm going to do it like this for right now so we use cards and dice we use dominoes we're going to use those today and so our first game is what we call addition battle and so in addition battle, what happens is dads pull two cards, kids pull two cards. Let me make sure I get those in the picture. And so here's dad's cards, here's the kids' cards. And what we're gonna do is we have the kids count all the cards because I always say dads don't need practice counting, we hope. And if you don't count dad's cards, sometimes they'll cheat. And so the kids and the dads kind of get that joke and it's not always a joke. So you gotta watch that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna count the first card, then the second card, then we're gonna count them together. So you just one, two, three, four, five, six, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we want our parents to work on saying the number sentence with the kid. Now in elementary, I have the kids say the number sentence, but with three, four, five-year-olds, uh, we wanna do this. One plus six is seven, right? Um, <laughs> that's what I said I think so I think I said a 10 but anyways one plus six is seven and I may be ahead of myself and so then we're gonna count the other one one two three one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so three plus seven is ten right and so whoever has the largest number wins all the cards so the kid would win all the cards and so you do that and you add that up. And so it does a couple of things. It gets kids to count. It gives them something to count, right? This, there's not a house probably in the country that doesn't have a broken deck of cards. They may not have a, you know people that don't have all the cards in their deck. That's not who we're talking about. But if they have a broken deck of cards, they can use those to do this activity. And so the same thing happens. And I want to show you something, and I've, some of you are starting to twitch a little bit because you work with little kids. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six plus four is ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're going to count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Seven plus nine is 16. So the kid wins again. That doesn't always happen. That's one of the lessons dads learn is my kid's not a good loser. And that's why you do these games so your kid can learn to win and to lose. Now, for those of you that have younger kids, part of what you've noticed is we went above 10. If I was to just say, keep it to 10, most of you would get mad at me because you know you're teaching kids to do amazing things at the ages of four and five. And so um, with most kids, we do ace through nine. We don't use tens, we don't use jacks, kings, queens. We have all that in the instructions. But we typically use ace through nine. So you're gonna get kids that can count to 18, right? And um, it makes it easier for that. But if you've got smaller kids, then what we do is, we, or, you know, smaller, younger, then we talk about doing it this way. We take everything ace through five. Now we're never gonna be above 10, right? And so if you're working with a three-year-old, that number one has not quite gotten past 10 or is still working on one through 10, then you just pull the ace through five cards. And so you've got one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, two plus four is six. Now the kids aren't gonna add these up at this age, but they're learning that by counting those together, that's what addition is. And so whoever has the highest number wins. 
Um, looks like the kid's pretty lucky. So we do this. This is addition battle. Now, let me show you what else we can do. If you're going to do addition battle, you're also going to do subtraction battle. Now, when I'm doing this in a group, when I've got lots of dads and kids, let's say in a cafeteria, uh, I'm trying to think if I've got a picture. No, I don't have a picture of our math night. Um, here's the handout, by the way. So we'll send the handout in English and Spanish. That's what that will look like. Uh, so we have the four games, three of them, of which I'm going to show you today. So we, if you're playing addition battle, now you're going to play subtraction battle. And then what you're going to do, you're going to take the small card and you're going to count it, or the bottom card, if the dad sets it right. You're going to count the first card, then you're going to cover up that many on the second card. Let me do this. So you're going to do that much on the second card. So, let me focus in a little bit. That's not you, that's me. All right. So we're going to count one. We're going to cover up one, and we have one. So two minus one is one. And then we're going to say one, two, three. Then we're going to cover up one, two, three. One, two, three. Six minus three is three. Now, the reason we cover this up is subtraction for our little guys is an abstract concept. And so by doing it this way, they see that it's covered up. It's, it's amazing how many dads still do that. And I'm like, that's, a, that's confusing for an adult, my plus a kid. So we always wanna make sure we turn the card over. And so now the dad has one and the kid has three, right? But before we get too excited about the kid, in subtraction battle, the one that has the smallest number wins, and they win all the cards. So we're going to do the same thing again. So we've got another ace. This should be a different game, maybe, with an ace. So ace is always one. Don't let your dad tell you that it's 11 when he has it. So one, we count one, we cover up one. Four minus one is three. One, two, we're going to cover up two. Three minus two is one. So now the kids got their luck back and they win all the cards. So that's addition battle and subtraction battle. Now the other thing, you can do that with cards, but you can also do it with dominoes. Now we're not gonna cover up, but let's do addition battle. So you've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four plus four is eight. That's one of the reasons we have them count, because we can see the number on the cards, but we want them to see the numbers both in representation and in number, and there's no numbers on your dominoes. Now, if you want, you can write it there somewhere, but this is what we're doing. Well, this is a very tactile exercise for a kid. So you say four plus four is eight, Then the kid counts one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two plus five is seven. So dad has eight, kid has seven, dad wins those dominoes. Then you play through and you can play all of them. So you get this. Then we do subtraction battle, right? You can do addition battle or subtraction battle. I'll show you subtraction battle. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. If you cover that up, that's zero. One minus one is zero. So now you have a tie. The person with the smallest number on the domino wins the tie. So all that's in our instructions. And so we play those games with cards, those games with dominoes. And then, let me see if I can get down with it. Can y'all see that? There we go. I would say the dice are out of focus, but sometimes when you guys play dice, they're out of focus. But that's, I'm just going to leave it at that. So what you do with, this game is called Action 18. So the dads and kids take, pitch, take, time, take turns rolling the dice. Then you add up the numbers. Now with my elementary kids, I make it a speed game, right? So with the elementary kids, we're making it a speed game and they've got to answer it before their dad does. Now, one of the things we show dads is they're pretty quick. They're quicker than the kids because the dads practice more than the kids. The kids are doing a lot of higher level math in the elementary, but they don't practice a lot. We don't do a lot of drill and kill, which I think is good for our kids. So the parents think, well, they're not any good at math. No, they're not fast. They don't have fluency. So this is a really good exercise to build fluency. But the other thing we're doing here is for our little guys, what you may need to do is have two pair of dice or take turns rolling and see who gets the highest number. If you do that, 
now they've got two more times to count. One plus one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I got six, one, two, three, four, five, dad got five. So who, what's the biggest number, right? And then you can turn the dice and explain it. So this helps the dad work on, helps the kid work on number skills. It does help dad work on patience. Helps moms work on patience, right? But these are things that people already have at the house. And so this is most of our math stuff. Like I said, let me show you our math handout again. That was, let's see if we can go here. So we've got the four games, English on one side, Spanish on the other. You're able to share that with your families. Uh, it's a PDF, so you'll be able to send it out uh, or you'll be able to print it up. And you can print it up in black and white. It still works quite well, or you can print it up in color and it's beautiful. Um, and then, so we wanted you to know that activity. Also, if you go to the website that's on here, it has the domino games on our strongfathers.org website and you'll get that link in the email that you get. So that's our dad and kid math. Now, for so you've got some little bitty guys and you, the challenge with Head Start and early Head Start is you're always in that transition. You've got uh, older three-year-olds in a class, younger three-year-olds in a class, but also an early Head Start, you've got a kid that's older. And so there's always this transition piece. So one of the things I like to do with my younger kids, two to four, uh, this works out pretty well. Let me back up off of this a little bit. There we go. And so what you do, some of this is already glued down. So let me take this off for a minute. You just take a piece of cardstock, and I just used white for our example, and you fold it in half. And then what you do, let me see if I can get my, I had a glue stick. What did I do with my glue stick? Oh, here we go. All right, I'm back. There's a reason I don't do a cooking show. So put a little glue on it. it looks like I've eaten all the glue stick over here. You stick those on, all right? So you have them decorate on both sides of the crease as much as they want. Um, I actually bought um, these shapes with the stick them on the back and you just peel it. I've had them for years. I had it in storage, all the, all the stick them came off. Uh, so you can use glue and I'll show you how we did that in a minute. So this is how you do the activity and you let the kid decorate it however they want, right? So let me do this. You don't need to see me for this one for a minute. All right, um, the other way. Here we go. So you let them decorate it however they want. Then you can fold it up. You can put it in your purse. You can put it in the car. You can put it on the dinner table, whatever you want to do. You could decorate all four sides if you want. And then, I'm so proud of my work here. Then this is what you end up with. And if anybody can decorate like a toddler, I'm pretty, I'm pretty much your man. So what you're going to do here is now you've got all this. And you're like, well, what am I going to do with this? Now they can count the blue things. Count all the blue things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine blue things. Okay, count the green things. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that green? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you can also have discussions about colors. I really feel like it's more of a lime, not a green. Okay, have those discussions. So there's green. Count the yellow things. One, two, three, four, five, six. Count the squares. Oh wait, those are different colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So you see all of a sudden now we're doing some work. Count the round things. Now, so you've got yellow, you've got green, you've got orange, you've got blue. You've also got what are, what's round. Now count the corners. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Now you're going to have the optimal discussion with a frail. There's a corner inside here. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. I'm not going to the other side. So you see, you can call out whatever it is. What are the round things? What are the square things? What are the triangles? Um, what are the different colors? You can count the small ones, the medium ones, and the large ones. And so in one piece of paper with one art project that they do, you've got not quite infinite, but you've got a lot of opportunities to help these kids count. That count. The other thing is, depending on their age, you're only going to do certain things. We may not count the corners. That may be insane for a three-year-old. But you could, you could count how many blue corners are there if there's not as many blue corners. 
The other thing is they make it, they're very proud of it. And like I said, I got as many blue stains as a toddler did. Um, and so I like this activity. I always do it with my pre-K kids, my really, really pre-K kids, sometimes in Head Start, sometimes in Early Head Start. And the parents get to take this home. And this is a good lap activity. It's a good table activity. Uh, and it's it, depending on how you do it, it's a good activity. You can use stickers instead of foam. If you have different shaped stickers, I would love to see that. We just use foam because we thought it was fun. Um, but if you want to do, do one that you felt safer in the car um, or you felt like wasn't going to fall apart on you, you can use stickers instead of these. But I would do shapes because it covers shapes, colors, counting, uh, all kind of different things. And so that's all of our math activities. So we've got those handouts. Um, we've got all those things. So that's our cards with kids. Uh, I'm going to open it up for a minute. Let me kill this for a minute. Um, and Fernando or Ed, whoever's doing questions, uh, before I just blow past that, I was going to see if there's any questions, anything we need to clear up. These are things they already have in their house. It's things that are already going on. Mike, this is Ed. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great. No, lots of compliments. A very child friendly. Uh, some folks were asking if the instructions were available in Spanish. I think you uh, answered yeah, that. Yeah, they're available in Spanish. All, the, all of our handouts are English and Spanish both. Wonderful. And can you tell them uh, what the website is that they can receive those materials or obtain that? Well, I don't want them to leave yet, but I'll show them. I'll still show them. Okay. That way they so can go right to your to website. Work. And while Mike is pulling up his website, uh, a couple other questions came in. Would this be available on YouTube? Yes, we are recording it. So we'll have it posted and you'll receive after the webinar um, information on where you can find it once it's re downloaded and posted. So our Great. website's right there. I'll leave that on the bottom for a little while. So you'll see that from time to time. Wonderful. Um, and then I have uh, one hand raised. Let me uh, check on that. Uh, Elizabeth Martinez. Let me uh, allow her to talk. Hold on, Mike. Elizabeth, you right. ready? I'm okay, ready. Elizabeth. Hello, caller. There you go. Let's see. Go ahead, Elizabeth. I'm not hearing her. Nope. I don't either. So let's uh, let's go you ahead. Can mute it. Ask her to unmute herself. Sometimes they don't know. If you muted everybody, then they can't unmute themselves. Okay, yeah, really gonna, I, I made I'm the mistake this morning of hitting unmute and had a barking dog and a crying child in three different houses. So we're gonna. We're gonna <laughs> no, no. Let's get There's that. a reason we mute you guys. Please understand. If, uh, if folks want to ask questions, there is the Q and A, um, and there is the chat box. Um, so, Mike, I don't see any more questions in the Q&A. Let me check the chat box. Uh, just lots of compliments. And then a, a couple of questions. Uh, so, I'd say let's go forward. Okay. Uh, real quick on the, on the website, it's just a quick form. You fill that out. We're going to send you an email um, with all these materials. The, one of the first things we're going to send you, I don't want you to get too upset. Uh, once you fill out the form, the email you'll get either later this evening or in the morning is an invitation to send out to your dads. I'm not gonna have your dads register for anything. I'm not trying to collect their names or anything, but I wanna be able to send you the link to send to your parents. And we're gonna do this exact type of activity, maybe the ones you just saw, for Strong Fathers Fridays. We thought about doing something every day. We don't think parents and or dads are gonna to get to it every day. So we're gonna stick with Strong Fathers Fridays because we like our, our alliteration. Um, but if you sign up for the next several Fridays, we're going to be doing these activities just like you see. Um, and we're just, you know, it'd be a five, 10 minute video at the most. And we'll be pushing that out to you guys, uh, hopefully in this format. I really like this format. It's, it's easy for me. Hopefully it'll be good for the dads to watch. Um, so that's part of what you'll get. We've got an April uh, early childhood activity calendar and we'll be sending that as well. So let me go to the next thing here real quick. So we do science nights, dad and kid science nights, dad and kid um, math nights, dad and kid reading nights. We're not going to do much on reading today. You guys handle that pretty well. Uh, we just want dads to read. I've got a lot of stuff for that. I've got some stuff I'll send out to you to share with your dads, but we're not going to talk about that today. So one of the first things we do at every science night is we do paper airplanes. And so we have instructions, even though dads would scoff at us, for doing this. Um, and then we find out some dads don't know how to make airplanes. It's okay. It's not part of the man card thing, right? But 
So let me back off of this a little bit. So what we do is we just have the kids make an airplane. We have these instructions. Even if we don't pass out the instructions, we have, this is how we know dads don't always know. They Google how to make a paper airplane. And there's a ton of stuff on Google. Uh, we may even share some of that with you in the email. And we'll definitely share it on our Strong Father Fridays. So I'm gonna make a real quick airplane. And so you just fold it and you can do one of two things. Now, if you're doing the really, really basic airplane, this is about as basic as it gets. This is not in the instructions because we're a little extra at Strong Father. But if you want a paper airplane, there's a paper airplane. Now, I told you we're a little extra at Strong Fathers, right? So in getting prepared for this, I went to Dollar General because that's where you find all the Dollar Tree or Dollar General, either way. Um, number one, those are <laughs> there's a Dollar General about every four blocks in the country. Um, so I'm not worried about parents having access to Dollar General, even on, um, you know, uh, staying home right now. They're within almost arm's reach of a Dollar General, at least in Texas and around the South. So I found this really cool paper. And it's metallic paper on one side and white on the other. I've never made a cooler airplane than this right here, right? Um, there's, I think, 10 sheets for $2. And so we'll share that with the dads as well. Uh, there is actually a, a rose gold, which uh, boys can like pink. It's all good, but I'm promising you every girl will pick that every time, almost every girl. So um, this is a paper airplane. And like I said, we put stickers on it. But what we, now when we do our science night, we talk about Bernoulli. When I do the video for your dads, I'll do Bernoulli. Not that they care that much, but we'll talk about why there's science involved in paper airplane. The cool part about either one of these airplanes no matter which one we're talking about, is that they're both going to fly. If you leave, if it leaves your hand, it's going to go from your hand to the ground. It may go a foot, it may go 12 feet, but it's going to fly. I did not always want to do paper airplanes in my science nights with dads. And some of the guys that worked with me said, this is the icebreaker. This is the one that gets everybody comfortable to do the next activity. So paper airplanes, like I said, we have the instructions in English and Spanish. We'll have resources to get to other uh, websites with other paper airplanes and you saw my picture there with all the kindergartners and they love it we used to use white paper that's super boring uh, and so we started using uh, brightly colored paper and the teachers about broke out because we were we were folding colored paper instead of letting them use it for something else um, and uh, now that I know there's metallic paper it may be a game changer for us at Strong Father. But the very first thing we do is paper airplanes. Here's the thing, if you have instructions for four or five airplanes, if you have stickers and Crayolas, that's a one to one and a half hour activity for almost any kid. My son, who is now 24, has, some of you've known him, some of you've seen him at a Head Start conference, because he's worked with us at a Head Start conference, um, or some of the fatherhood conferences we do, right? So he's 24 years old. One of his most favorite memories, I hope, he said it is, is that we made paper airplanes at one of the many hotels we were at. And when we were on the 12th or 15th floor and the windows open, if we had a balcony, he couldn't wait to get to whatever floor and find out if we had a balcony or not. Because if he knew we had a balcony, we were throwing paper airplanes, right? And so he's throwing paper airplanes out of some really nice hotels. Um, but dads and kids love this. They need the instructions. We'll provide those instructions. There's a lot of science that goes with that. And we'll also give you some links to YouTube videos that we didn't make, but that are really good for dads and kids, moms and kids as well. So it's really good science tied to paper airplanes, right? And so now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make rockets. Mike, Let before you move on. Yes. Before you move on, there was an interesting question just wanna ask you to address. Uh, your Strong Fathers Friday, lots of positive responses there. But is there an opportunity for it to be done in Spanish? You know, I was thinking about that today. And so here's the challenge. Tal vez no sabíamos, yo soy un gringo. Entonces, cuando estamos trabajando con los padres, estoy usando español. Entonces, para poco de las actividades, yo puedo. Y tal vez necesito estudiar más vocabulario para los otros. So yeah, I actually thought about that today and we will do, it may be a shorter version because of my limited vocabulary. Uh, it may freak people out because they think we're doing that. Um, 
because like I said, you may not know this. I'm a white dude, uh, just in case you didn't know. Um, but yeah, we can, I think we can do most of, almost every one of these activities in Spanish, even if it's redheaded Spanish. Uh, and so that's the idea is we'll knock out both of those. So I think I appreciate the question uh, and I appreciate the affirmation because that was a thought we probably needed to do. Um, do not grade me on my Spanish, grade me on whether the dads enjoyed it or not. Um, if they get the basic instructions, that's what we want to do. If you want to grade my Spanish, you're going to be spending a lot of time on video. Um, like, but yeah, no, we a, lot of, a lot of love coming to you on the Spanish, so don't worry about your Spanish. Yeah. They're like, what? So, nope. um, yeah, so we, everything we do is in English and Spanish. We don't go anywhere where we don't need to do that. Uh, we've actually, I think we did probably six or seven programs this year in Spanish only because once we got rolling in the crowd, I looked around and says, anybody here, I know not everybody here speaks English. Anybody here not speak Spanish? And so we just switched over to that unless I just needed some help on whatever words or whatever. Um, I've learned Spanish the hard way in front of the cafeteria or the meeting room and people give me a ton of grace and hopefully they'll do that on video. So yeah, I appreciate the affirmation on that. Uh, we're going to do it. Our, <laughs> we're going to do it strong father Spanish. So we'll provide that. So let me go to our next thing here. Let me switch this off. I'm going to try to move along here. Um, actually I meant to do this. There we go. So this is just a condiment bottle. It can be a yellow one. It can be a red one. If you go to Dollar Tree or Dollar General, they're about 50 cents a piece. I try to find them cheaper on Amazon and other places. They're cheaper in the dollar stores anywhere. So here's what you're going to do. I'm going to see if I can't get down with this. So what you're going to do, you're going to cut that off because we don't, we don't need that. And then you're going to get a big straw and a little straw. Here in Texas, they're going to be from Sonic. Let's see if I can focus that a little bit. It's a little too hard to focus. The, um, so um, this is a wider straw and a skinnier straw, maybe is how we should say that. You can do those at Starbucks. I think you can do that at McDonald's. Um, I know you can do it at Sonic. And so what we're going to do with the smaller one is we're going to cut, cut it about in half. We're going to split the sides. Can you see that? You're going to put it on the top. And then you're going to use some tape and we have all these instructions, English and Spanish. So if you have a chance to get materials to your families, uh, a roll of masking tape, if you want to give it to them, if they don't already have it, is about a buck and then 50 cents for this and the straws you can either buy or right now you can probably get them donated. So you tape that to the top and then the other one you cut, you put tape over the top. I'm going to do a quick and fast job here. Put it over the top of the straw. And so it doesn't let any air out. Now what I like to do is I like to make one. You ever see those cooking shows I talked about? So I made fins on mine. I covered mine up. I put a little weight on it. And so let me see, I'm going to go back to our view here. So I've got the bottle. I put the straw on top of it. That's a fixed item. You just cut it a little bit to put it on there, tape it down. You can use a duct tape, you could use masking tape. And then you make your little rocket. Half a straw works better than a longer straw. And then, right? So you can shoot these across the room. Uh, you can shoot these into a bucket. Uh, worst case, now the, the original exercise was put this in a big straw and blow it. There's no way I'm letting dads or kids have a bunch of dart guns. So even if they shoot these at each other, they're fairly harmless. The other thing you can do is you can put a tip on it if you want. Um, we find that just putting tape on it. Now, dads and fourth, fourth graders will put pins in them and stick them in the ceiling. You didn't hear that here. But for little guys, and I won't tell the dads that, for the little guys, so... That works out great. It's about a buck and a half for everything. They get to keep this. They will make people shoot these everywhere. You put it in a toy box, they forget about it a month later. They're like, this thing ever, I just found it again. Uh, and you pull that out. So we do that. Um, we do big stomp rockets. We're gonna probably do one of those later with our Strong Father Friday, show them how to make a PVC two liter bottle rocket launcher. That's a big project, um, but it's a lot of fun for the dads and kids. We'll see what our following is, see how they get along with that. And we'll do that as well. So here, let's go to the next activity. This is all in our science. Now. And so 
VPN. Let me pull this up. This is our handout. Try to do a little Spanish to let you know. So we have all the instructions here. All right. And so this is how to make the rockets. There is no actual explosion. We just like to play with graphics, just so you know. We're not doing gasoline or anything. Now, everybody get ready, okay? Let me do a split screen here. This is a mousetrap. Those of you in early childhood just passed out. Please understand, I am not giving mousetraps to three-year-olds, right? I'm giving mousetraps to their parents. I'm giving mousetraps to their fathers, which actually may be more dangerous. But I'm going to show you how to do this safely and funly. Um, and I will tell you, I have worked with thousands and thousands and thousands. I showed you 225,000, probably at the end of this year, almost a quarter of a million fathers. We have not had one reported incident at a science night. Did you hear what I said? One reported incident. I'm not telling you that a kid didn't get their finger in the trap, but if they're with their dad, their dad's like, you're fine. Uh, nobody lost a finger. Nobody went to the hospital. Everybody's fine. So let me show you how we do this real quick and put you at ease a little bit. So what we're going to do, let me pull this off for a minute. So what we're going to do is there's a staple right here. You pull that staple out, you throw that staple away. That may be the most dangerous thing about this. Get rid of that staple. Don't let it get in your vacuum cleaner. Now for you city folks that don't know how to set a mousetrap, use glue traps. You pull this hoop over, put that over. There's a hook right there. That hook doesn't go in anything. It goes next to that notch. And once the pressure hits it, then it, that's what sets it. If you take the pressure off, it's not set. You put the pressure on, it's set. So you've got to move it over. It doesn't go in that hole at the end. It goes right next to that notch and the pressure holds it. What we're going to do is we're going to take a spoon and we're going to tape it on the R side of this mousetrap. Okay. And then we're going to make a catapult. Now let me show you something and show you why this is way safer than you think. That didn't make it sound safer, did it? So <laughs> we move this. This is a spring that drives everything. Now you're on safety, right? If you're worried about this as a parent, we'll tell the dads this as well, moms this. If you're worried about this as a parent, after you do this activity and you don't want your kid going around with this, you take the spring off and they can't hurt anything. When you're ready, you can put the spring back on. So what we do is we take the spoon on top of the hoop like this. All the instructions talk about the right placement. We're gonna take short pieces of tape I'm going to go round and round and round. This is really hard to do on camera. You just go round and round and round on that hoop, right? So, again, through the magic of television. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so this is what you get. I don't know how many people jump across the spectrum. So. This is what you get. All right, now let me show you. So when the spring's off, we're on safety, nothing's gonna happen. When you're ready to go, I would say take your daddy fingers, pull it back, set it. And now it's a catapult. Well, that doesn't sound like a great idea for some of you, but here's what we use for ammunition. A marshmallow. So let me show you a video real quick. It is in slow-mo. So I tried to shorten it a little bit. This is a science night at an elementary. You see the crowd, you see the diversity. This is what most of our programs look like. So the video is going, this is going in slow-mo. You see people about to set their mouse traps. I feel like I'm a sportscaster now. So you see them about to do their mouse trap and you see them working. So probably 85, 90 families there that night. So there was a whole lot of sugar in the air. You notice everybody staying in their seat because we were good to warn them about that. But once you get dads get these at home, they'll put two spoons on them. They'll put longer spoons on them. They'll do all kinds of things to help their kid out. Like I said, what we'll tell them is to make this safe while it's sitting around, we'll put it on safety. 
most kids, little guys can't set it anyways and they won't. Put it up in the cabinet, use it when you're ready. When they want to throw marshmallows, throw marshmallows. If you want to line them up across the room and pump them full of sugar, let them catch it with their face or their mouth. But you see the joy, you see the fun, you also see nobody's running out injured, right? So it's easy, it's fun, it's really safe. And so let's go back to this. And I'm not gonna use my finger even though I can. So get ready, here we go. All right, the other thing we do is we tape it to the printer. Okay, so that's our mousetrap activity. You saw that. Right, let me do this. Here we go. So here's the instructions for that in English and Spanish. Uh, we, all, we use plastic spoons. Let me show you something on the plastic spoons. If, if parents are using it, just let parents use what they find. Um, it's kind of on them. But if you're giving them out, buy the cheap medium spoons. They just, they just do a lot better. They're less likely to break at all. So that's our mousetrap catapult. That's our straw rockets. That's our paper airplanes. Um, let me go back to this. So you've seen these, well, let's do this. So you've seen these products and these products are what they're making, right? You've seen the process for making, you've seen the product that they end up with. So they end up with an airplane, they end up with straw rockets, they end up with uh, mouse catapults. Um, these are things they can use over and over again. These are simple things that they can do. Um, it is really hard to mess up any of this. And so they're going to be successful um, when they're working with dads, particularly and a lot of moms do the same thing. They'll be taping the bottom of the spoon. They'll be tape around the spoon to make it a scoop and they'll figure out it throws it further. It throws those other things. And so that's what we do at science night, but each one of these will be each one of their own activities. Like when we do a strong father Friday with the rockets, we're going to talk about, see how high it can go, see how far it can go. You can also take a bent straw, and you can do that out of the bottle and the kids can stomp on it. So you just tape it in the L to make sure it stays straight and the kid can stomp on it and the rocket goes straight up. Uh, we do that with two liter bottles, but you can do that with the condiment bottles as well. We really don't have a great way to do that with the water bottle. I wish we had some kind of cap that we could use really well. Um, and we may do that for the dad videos, kind of do one that they can do at home with a lot of these drink bottles that still have like the sports mouthpiece or whatever. So I'm gonna open it back up to questions for a minute before we go on to our next activities. So Mike, thanks. Lots of, uh, lots of positive response. People are real appreciative of getting the instructions. Uh, there were a couple hands raised just to remind folks we're not gonna turn on the audio. So it's best to put your questions in the chat. Um, and just to go back up, it seems like the rocket, uh, the rocket uh, activity uh, was uh, most well received, most interesting, and, and then people did jump when they catapulted. Them. <laughs> yeah, so okay. He, he so let's go back to that for a minute. I have had Head Start say, we're not going to do the mousetrap. And I'm like, the kids love it. The dads love it. Everybody's safe. No, in your classroom, don't pass out mousetraps to four-year-olds. We get that. This is an adult activity helping kids. We've got no, all kinds of ways to look into that, so it's good. Again, if you choose not to do it, that's fine. We're going to let the dads choose to do it. Moms choose to do it. Um, I have dads that don't want to touch it. I have moms that don't want to touch it. It's fine. Um, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, the main thing is that we make sure they pass out marshmallows instead of, you know, hard candy or whatever. So, uh, so other than that, there's just a few comments about trying it with a two liter uh, bottle rocket. They want to get, you give that a good, a good push. Uh, and that there are also some, well, these are great icebreakers for family meetings. So if the event is, really on another topic, but just to get them warmed up. These are some great resources. Yeah, so like in Science Night, we do paper airplanes, straw rockets, um, mousetrap catapults, and Alka-Seltzer uh, canister rockets. It's so hard to find film canisters. I didn't do that for you um, because any it, we still do them, but we've got to order like thousands of them. So it's not exactly in the junk drawer science kind of idea. I'll give you some resources for that to you professionally. You guys can use that. But yeah, you could use one of these for each meeting and be great. Great. So any other questions? And I nope. know we're about to finish up here in a second. That's, that's, that's all to say. Thanks. Hey, Mike, Ed, sorry to jump in. Uh, I did notice some questions regarding the, uh, some of the handouts, and I'm just reassuring folks that we will um, share those with them after the session. Yeah, everything, all the handouts you see are going to be sent to you in the email. The first email you get is the invitation to Father Friday. We'll probably compile all of this and make sure we've got a really good list based on your input. 
Um, I mean, everything you've seen here is already coming, but based on your input, we'll have a really good email. And we'll send that out on Monday for all you. If you sign up, put it back up here for a second. If you sign up, strongfathers.com region nine. Um, like I said, all this is free. We're going to send it to you. Just want to get you to sign up for it. And then we're going to send all this stuff to you. And then if you, um, want, we'll go ahead and you'll get father Fridays. If you need to opt out, you always get to opt out, but we'll send you that link for every Friday, uh, to send out to your dads. So, um, and like I said, now that we know we're going to try to do that in English and Spanish. All right. So, um, Guys, so we've got just a couple more minutes. Um, I did a bubble video that I'll share with you because I wasn't gonna do bubbles in my office. Um, and it's a really, not a great video, but it's just a few ideas about how dads can use bubbles. We'll do a full on uh, bubble activity for Strong Fathers Friday. Right now it's like 80, 85 degrees in Texas. It won't be by the end of the weekend. Um, but we know that in the next month or so, it'll be fine for everybody to go outside anywhere in the country. Um, and we hope so, um, both on weather and other issues. So real quickly, um, again, I'm trying not to freak out on my early childhood folks. You're not going to do balloons in your programs. Dads play with balloons all the time. Somebody says, but we don't want dads. We don't want kids choking on balloons. Absolutely agree. All right. We know the warning. We know what it is. Right, children, and this is under eight. If you've got an eight year old chewing on balloons, we may need to do some more work. Uh, not that it can't happen, I'm just saying. So balloon activities, I, did, I have a whole set of balloon activities. Keep it up with your hands, keep it up with your feet, keep it up with your nose, keep it up with your elbows, keep it up. If you blow up a balloon and you do that. Now here's the other thing. Some of you are very adamant about not using balloons in your program. I get that, it's a liability. But if we don't teach dads how to use balloons, then who's going to teach them? Because a kid's going to get a balloon. They're going to get a balloon when they go to the grocery store. They're going to get a balloon when they go to Home Depot. They're going to get a balloon at a party. And so if we try to protect them too much, we're not teaching parents to make sure they pick up the busted balloon. And we want to think most parents know that. We want to make sure that we teach every parent to know that. Right? So let me get out of the warning there for a minute. And so balloons... Uh, which are not only cheap, but easy. Some of you remember these little obnoxious things. These are great balloons to use because they're typically, uh, you can deflate them and inflate them. Also, if you take the rubber band off, they're just like regular balloons and they're not as obnoxious and they can use them over and over again. These are about 25, 50 cents a piece, depending on how you buy them. Um, and so these may be a better option if you are actually giving parents materials for these activities. Now, the other thing you can do don't flinch. I found these really cool fly swatters at the dollar store. So depending on your setting, depending on your kids, you can actually use a fly swatter instead of your hand to do gross motor skills, which end up being fine motor skills. So again, not in the house, not in the small house, but another activity, you can also do it with noodles. Um, we didn't do that just because I wasn't able to show all the fun you can have with the noodle and a balloon. The last thing you can do with the balloon, there is about, let me kill that warning. Hopefully you guys won't choke to death, okay, on a balloon. There's about, probably not a quarter, of a, a quarter of a cup of water in here, but because there's a quarter of a cup, it doesn't float. So when you try to knock it up, it's coming straight back down. And that is a ton of fun. Even if you play this in the house, it's less water than comes off your glass sitting on the table. And so just by making it a little bit different than a balloon, you can do that. And I'll let parents choose that. All right, and so we talked about bubble activities. I'll send those to you. Let me make sure I've shared everything that I've got over here. Those are active activities. We got a lot of those that we're gonna share with dads on the Fridays. We've got, we've got our strongfathers.com. If you just go to strongfathers.com, there's information about our programs. Uh, we're looking at doing an online training uh, for our curriculum and also for just overall family and father engagement, like some bigger concepts, uh, some activities, but really how to build a full year of family and father engagement activities and how all that fits together. Um, so 
you're going to get a ton of free stuff when you sign up. Uh, understand I have things to sell. I'm going to give you an opportunity to buy. Okay. But, and again, if you want to opt out, I'm trying not to bug you. I know you have a ton of things to do, but we want to give you these free resources. We want to continue to provide those for your fathers and your families. Uh, like I say, we'll do it in English and Spanish. If you have um, a large population of any certain um, that need language needs, if you have a local interpreter or somebody that can translate, we will work with them to get that and put it in the format we already have. Right now, our calendar that we're going to send you, we have in English and Spanish. We used to provide it in Arabic, uh, and we just didn't have that many people using it, so we didn't put the time and money into it. But we have English and Spanish. We have some of those resources. So if you have a large population, you have somebody that can work with us, we can provide the text. They translate it. We drop that text in where it belongs. So we'd love to help you any way we can. Uh, go and sign up, and then we'll start working together on all the free stuff and then any other ways we can help you. So that's it, guys. I can talk all day, so I'll let them go. Mike, before Fernando uh, takes over, I just wanted to point out there were a couple questions that um, came around. One was, can mom sign up for the uh, Father's Friday? Some yes, Father's Friday. I, don't, I don't have any problem with it. We are focused on Father's. The reason we do that, not just because that's what we do, but if you, again, anybody can sign up. I'm not, everybody can come to our stuff. Everybody can go. Um, the reason we stuck even with the name, and I know we're talking about family engagement, you can use these activities with everybody. When you call it Strong Father Friday, the dad kind of doesn't get out of it, right? The wife can say, hey, no, this is for dads. Head Start sent this for the dads. Or Head Start said, you need to do this, right? Or she tells the kid, hey, they sent us a dad activity. You want to do this with dad? And he can't get out of it. So there's part of that as well. Anybody can do any of these activities. Nobody's going to get turned away. Uh, so yeah, anybody wants to do anything for a kid, we're here for them. Wonderful. So Fernando, you want to wrap us up? And thanks, Mike, for your generosity. Oh, thanks for the opportunity. Good to talk to you guys. Let me know. I look forward to you guys signing up. We've got lots of good stuff to get you.